need to film my video, please. Hey, mate. No. We've got to film a video. We've got to film a video. What are you doing? We've got to film the video. Our fans want us to film a video, Simba. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Kat Methan. I am your yoga teacher for today. This is Simba. He may be in and out of screen every now and again, but hopefully, I was gonna say, he won't sit down on the mat, but he's chosen that that is his space today. We'll hopefully just work around him. So as you can see from the title of today's video, this is all about yoga for complete beginners. So those of you that have never got on a yoga mat before, this is the practice for you. So thank you so much for choosing to do my video um, and for having the courage to kind of try something new. This flow can of course as well be done by anybody looking for just a chilled out flow, even those of you that have done yoga before. So we're gonna start down in our easy pose. So this cross leg position, all you're gonna need is your yoga mat, but if you don't even have that, you could just do this on your floor at home. You don't need any blocks or anything, but if you've got cushions and you wanna just pop a cushion underneath each knee, just to kind of make it slightly more comfortable for yourself, then by all means, go for that. So we're gonna start in this position. We're going to place the hands down on the knees. We're going to grow really tall through the crown of the head. So I want you to feel like there's a little bit of string coming out through the crown of the head. And then we're going to draw the head all the way up. And then you're going to feel the bottom on the mat really grounding down. So we've got this kind of dual action of being kind of pulled apart, having the spine elongated. And we're going to close the eyes. And in yoga, we focus a lot on the breath. So today's session, we're gonna really focus on just noticing the breath, being aware of the breath as we move through the postures. So you don't need to make any massive changes to the breath. If you can, you can try and focus on deep breathing through the nose. So in through the nose, out through the nose. Um, but if not, just be aware of what's going on in the breath. Yoga can sometimes be a little bit tricky when it comes to really connecting the breath with the movement, but it's all about just focus, dedication, and taking a little bit of time to work on it. And obviously, if you are completely new to the practice, then it's gonna take you a little while. Simba, that is totally, totally awkward for me and my yoga practice. Anyway, so we're gonna start here, keeping those eyes closed. Come to just watch the breath. We're gonna take some shoulder rolls going all the way back. So rolling those shoulders back, feeling any clicks, any stiffness. And then we'll go forwards. Nice, okay. You're gonna take the head, the left ear, towards the left shoulder. So in yoga, it's all about creating space in the body. So even though we're closing off this side, we're creating space in the right side of the neck. And that's what we're doing in basically every posture is creating some space. Bring the head back to center and then take the right ear over to the right shoulder. You can keep the eyes closed. And coming back to center, now dropping the chin down to the chest. Feel the breath, feel the breath maybe in the upper spine, in the neck. And then start to lift the head and maybe take the head all the way back. This is the one that can sometimes feel a little bit awkward, may hold some resistances to opening through the throat.
and coming back through center. You're gonna place the left hand down on the mat, create some space, so slide that left hand away, have space between the shoulder and the ear, and then you're gonna sweep the right arm all the way up, opening through the right side body. If you can, you're gonna see if you can pivot the chest up towards the ceiling a little bit. And then coming back through center and placing the right hand down, excuse me Simba, right hand goes down, left arm sweeps up and we go to the other side, creating space through the left side body. Okay, coming all the way back to center, now starting to walk the hands forwards. So you may only get to sort of this place, this position here. If the hips are a little bit stiff, if the, if the whole body really is a little bit stiff, you're not gonna be able to come that far forwards. Maybe though, you edge a little bit further forwards, and you come down onto the forearms, and you stretch through the spine. Maybe closing off the eyes. Now on an inhale, you're gonna to start to lift yourself all the way up. And you're gonna swing yourself around. And you're gonna lay down on the back. You're gonna lay down on the back with the knees bent in. <laughs> Thank you for my cushion, Zimba. With the knees bent into the chest. So your head will be fully down on the mat. I sadly have a little puppy in my way. Thank you. Oh, why thank you, pup. Okay. <laughs> From here, we're gonna inhale, Simba, away. Inhale, bring the forehead to the knees. Exhale, release. Inhale, forehead to knees. Exhale, release. Inhale, forehead to knees. Exhale, release. Two more times, inhale coming up. So we're firing up the core here. Exhale, release. Last time, inhale coming up. Exhale, release. So really important part of yoga, especially in my mind, is that no matter how early on we are in our practice, we use the core and we think about where it is because that's one of the parts of the body that's gonna keep our structure nice and strong and stable. Starting to rock backwards and forwards. And then come all the way up to seated, swing the knees around and we'll come on over to all fours. So we're on our all fours, in our all fours position. You've got the wrist, elbow and shoulder nicely stacked, same as the hip and the knees. We're gonna work through our cow and cat postures. So just working one by one, inhale, lift through the chest and then exhale as you round through the spine. Inhale as you lift. Exhale as you round. So we're just warming up the spine here. Inhale, lift. Exhaling round. Coming back to neutral. You're gonna spread through those hands. Take the right foot back and really push the right heel away from the body. So push it away as you also push through the hands. So getting a stretch through the right side calf muscle. And release that right leg. You're then gonna take the left foot back and push through the left side calf or the left side heel to then engage the stretch in the left side calf. Bringing the left knee back in. You're gonna take the bottom all the way back to the heels, widen the knees. So the knees come open even though the feet are together. We're gonna come down to a uh, wide leg variation of child's pose. So child's pose is a, some, is a pose that we can come back to at any time in any practice. It's a restorative pose that is always there for you. So arms are out long, let the forehead just melt down to the mat. 
and just settle into the breath. So just feel the inhales, the exhales with your own natural rhythm. And then you're going to walk the hands over to the left side. So hands walk over to the left. And then hands are walking back through center and they're coming over to the right side. So we're now opening through the left side body. And it's usually on the exhale, we start to feel a little bit more opening in the body. Coming back through center. Coming back onto your all fours. So from here, we're gonna tuck under the toes, okay? Tucking under the toes, you're then gonna shift the shoulders and the bottom back all together at the same time. So shoulders and bottom come back, spread through the fingers, and then you're gonna to start to lift the bottom all the way up into the sky, feet are hip width apart, keep a nice deep bend in the knees. Breathe here into our downward facing dog. So the reason why we have our knees bent is because if you look at the screen now, the tendency is, is that if we're living in a slightly tighter body, if we straighten the legs, we start to then round the spine and we end up in a kind of slightly more awkward half plank, half downward dog position. So by bending the knees, we can draw the armpits towards the thighs, find the length in the spine first, and then in time, it might not be today, it might be in a few days, weeks, months, we then start to straighten the legs. But today, we'll keep those knees nice and bent. Come down to the knees now. Just shake the wrists, give them a little bit of love. So in a lot of kind of Ashtanga, Vinyasa, like Hatha yoga classes, um, rocket yoga, many yoga classes, you're gonna use, put a lot of weight through the wrists, especially in downward facing dog. So it's important that when we're new to the practice, we give them a little bit of love. So we're then gonna come back to our downward facing dog. So find that position again with the bent knees. And we're then gonna start to walk the feet in. So feet come in towards the hands. Feet are about hip width apart. Again, keeping a bend in the knees. Let the head and the neck release. Take hold of opposite elbows and then just gently start to sway side to side. Just moving gently. And then finding stillness. Release the hands down. Roll the body all the way up to standing. Head and neck come last. Beautiful. Okay, so from here, we're gonna step towards the, well, nearish the front of the mat. I'm gonna pick up this left foot. We're gonna take a big step back with the left foot. Pivot the back foot open. So you've got the outside of the left foot in line with the, out, the end of the mat. We're gonna bend this front knee, so right knee bends, okay? And we push down through the outside of the back foot. Hips are open here. We want to externally rotate the right thigh and start to maybe push that right knee out to the side. You don't wanna let it collapse on the inside. We then take the arms out long and the gaze goes towards the right fingertips. And this is our warrior two. So maybe you're already starting to feel the work happening in the legs. That's great. We'll just ease off of that stretch for a moment. So start to straighten the right leg. Take a little breather. Inhale. And then we'll exhale. We'll come back into our warrior two. And then we're going to come and find our side angle. So placing the right elbow on the right knee. Keep the space between the shoulder and the ear. And then sweep the left arm all the way up and over. 
And you wanna create a diagonal line from the left fingertips all the way down to the left foot. Again, focusing on the breath. Okay, from here, you're gonna pivot the chest around, frame the foot with both hands, then drop the left knee down, coming into a low lunge. So you can either lift the chest up and interlace the hands on the knee and work down this way, if the balance is really tricky for you to get hold of here, then you can just take the hands down either side of the leg. Now, obviously, to do that, your chest is gonna shift forwards a bit. That's okay. I just want you to think about the stretch in the hips. But maybe you're a little bit further up. Maybe you're sort of about here, and that is absolutely fine, as long as you're feeling the stretch and it works for you. Okay, from here, frame the foot again. You're gonna work that right foot all the way back around to your all fours position. Tuck under the toes, shift the bottom and the shoulders back like we did before, and then lift the bottom, come to find your downward facing dog with a nice bend in the knees. Spread through the fingers. You want to be drawing the heels down towards the mat. If they can't reach the mat, that's absolutely fine. It's just a gesture of where they're heading. And then you're going to start to walk the feet in towards the hands again and peel the body all the way up to standing. Okay, this time, really grounding down through the left foot, we're gonna take that big step back again, coming to find our warrior two on the left side. So you wanna have this front heel either in line with the back heel or the back foot arch, roughly, okay? We wanna really push down through the outside of that right foot. We move deeper into this left leg. We externally rotate the left leg, switching on the glutes and starting to just move that left leg outwards towards the baby toe rather than letting it collapse inwards. Arms reach out to the sides. We gaze towards the front fingertips. Connect to the breath. So when you feel the legs maybe starting to shake, it's at those times when you really need to connect and engage with the breath. Ease off of the posture, straighten that leg, take a little breather, and then we'll move into it again, this time taking left elbow onto the left knee, keep that space in the neck, open the arm all the way across, find that diagonal line again. So the fingertips of the right hand all the way down to the outside of the right foot. And then slowly, you're gonna pivot the body around, frame the left foot, drop the right knee down, and come to find your low lunge on the left side. So maybe you're lifting the chest, you're taking the hands on top of the knee and working down this way. Maybe you wanna have the hands down on the mat, that is absolutely fine. Okay, from here, we're gonna place both hands down around the foot, bring that foot back. You know where we're heading, back to our downward facing dog. So from your all fours position, tuck under the toes, shift the shoulders and the bottom back, find that line, and then keeping the knees bent, we then reach the bottom all the way up to the sky. Beautiful. Okay, and then we'll start to walk those feet in towards the hands again. 
peel the body all the way up and then you're going to step the right foot to open out to the side or you can step to any side where you can still see your screen and see me. So we want to have the outside edges of the feet um, parallel to the outside edges of the mat. I'm going to take the hands to the hips. Now if you want to you can take a bend in the knees here. You're going to inhale, find that lift and length and then exhale, hinge at the hips as you come forwards. You can drop the hands down to the mat. Like I say, you can bend the knees. Those of you able to keep the knees straight, that's absolutely awesome. But just knowing your own limitations, knowing that turning up on the yoga mat today is actually the hardest part. So you've already done the hardest part. From here, we're then just gonna walk the hands over to the right leg. See if we can give the right leg a little bit of a hug. If you've got to bend the knees again, absolutely fine. And then walk those hands back around. Give the left leg a hug. And release to center. And then inhale, you're gonna lift the chest, come to the fingertips. Exhale the hands to the hips. And then inhale, come to stand all the way up. Awesome. Okay, you're then just going to bring yourself gracefully down to the mat, down to a kneeling position. Sit the bottom back onto the heels. Okay, so from here, you're going to place, you're going to go into a twist now. So you're going to place the left hand to the outside of the right leg. You're going to inhale, find length in the body, and then exhale as you take a twist. And you can take the right hand down to the mat, the fingertips down, and use that pressure to help with the twist. Work with the breath. And release, come through center. I'm gonna take the right hand to the outside of the left leg this time, so going the other way. Inhale, find that length again, and then exhale and we'll find the twist. Use the hands, use the pressure against the mat and the knee to get a little bit deeper into the twist. You wanna keep the chest nice and open. And coming all the way back to center. Nice. You're going to take the fingertips behind you, lift through the chest. So you want to see if you can kind of use this lower tummy, this core area to find the lift. And then we open and lift the chest all the way up. Shining the heart upwards and then release. Take the arms round like you're hugging a big teddy bear or a big puppy named Simba. <laughs> Drop the head down, rounding through the spine. And coming back to neutral. Okay, you're gonna sit down on the bottom, swing the legs around so the legs are out in front of you. Coming into Dandasana. So flexing the feet. You've got the hands down by the side so the legs are switched on, the muscles in the legs are switched on. Flexing the feet helps us to do that. You're then gonna ever so gently, and a small movement, drop chin down to chest. As you sit tall, close off the eyes, Dandasana. And release. Okay, we're going to work into a boat pose variation. So boat pose is a very common posture in vinyasa flow because it's what connects a lot of our vinyasas. So to begin with, you're just going to bend the knees up, hug the knees into the chest. 
And then you're gonna take the hands behind, so in between the calf and the thigh, so just underneath the knees. So you can stay here, or we start to shift the weight back a little bit into the bottom, and then see if we can lift the feet off of the mat. So this might be enough. So this is a modified boat pose where we're kind of balanced on the bottom, we've got a nice straight spine. If this feels good for you and you wanna take it to the next level, just bring those feet to a 90 degree angle. And you can use the pressure of the hands against the legs to keep the spine straight. But this in itself, this might be too much and if you feel like you went too far, just slowly release the feet down. We're gonna hold here for two more breaths. Take a nice big inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, release the feet all the way down. You're gonna take feet about hip width apart and slowly work your way down to the mat, down onto your back. <sighs> okay, so coming into our little finishing sequence. Place the hands down by the sides of you. You wanna be able to kind of touch the, the your, sorry, your heel <laughs> with your fingers. And then on the inhale, we're gonna come up to a modified bridge. So a half bridge pose where we are lifting the hips. Now you can interlace the hands behind the back here in order to wriggle those shoulders down and create a bit more space. And just close off the eyes here for a moment. We'll take a couple of breaths. If this is super intense for you as well, just lower it down a little bit, come down and then come back into it when you're ready. I've got a puppy stretching by my side. Simbri, you enjoying your yoga? You enjoying your yoga? Are you? <laughs> okay, slowly lowering the bottom down to the mat. Hug those knees into the chest. Start to rock the knees side to side. And then from here, you're gonna take the arms either out into a T shape, so the arms go out wide, or you can bring them into cactus. And you're gonna drop the knees over to the left side. As you can see, I'm a little bit out of room because I've got a dog. But you're gonna drop the knees down to the left side, keeping both shoulders down. Head is gonna go over to the right. You can close off the eyes and just breathe into the twist. Just ignore my very ugly squashed variation of it. Okay, coming back through centre. You're then going to switch to the other side, dropping the knees over to the right side. Head goes over to the left. Again, my variation is not looking so sassy right now, but I'm sure yours is, and I'm sure you're getting all the benefits from the stretch. Trying to keep both shoulders down on the mat. And you're gonna come back through center and we're gonna to come to what's called Shavasana. It's one that Simba is doing very well right now. You're gonna take the legs all the way down long, lay down flat on the back, palms of the hands facing upwards. Move the hands away from the body a little bit to give the shoulders a bit of space and then close off the eyes. So now just letting the breath soften now through the body. Letting it get a little bit more shallow. 
and just take a scan of the body. So I do this a lot in my yoga sessions. So just working your way up from the feet all the way to the crown of the head, section by section, just asking the body to relax, just checking in with the body. And then in your own time, whenever you're ready, you can stay here for a bit longer if you wish, but in your own time when you're ready, just rolling over to one side, whichever side feels like it might be a nice way to go. And then make your way up to a comfortable seated position. When you are in your comfortable seated position, take the hands to the knees. So we're just finishing how we started. Give the shoulders one nice big roll back. Sit tall. Bring the hands to heart center. And bow the head. Namaste. So namaste meaning that I bow to you. I respect you. Everything in me honors everything within you. So thank you so much for joining me and Simba today. Um, we loved having you. If this was your first ever yoga session, then you're awesome. Um, I'm really, really proud. Please do comment below and let me know if it was and how you got on. Of course, if you are kind of, you've been doing my flows a little bit and you just fancied a bit of time out, then awesome. Thank you for joining me in today's chilled out flow. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you do because you get lots of yoga videos um, and fun videos with this handsome fellow in them as well. Cause really that's why we all come to my channel now, now that I've got a dog. Um, so thank you so much for joining me and I will, or we will, Simba, say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. <laughs> we'll see you again soon. Bye.